Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Stedman. Hi, it's Joe Stedman, and I'm going to talk about uh, Storm Over Stalingrad by Multiman Publishing, designed by Tetsuya Nakamura. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But uh, Multiman republished it in 2008. This is an area impulse game for World War II, the Battle of Stalingrad, Russians versus Germans. Um, great little game from the International Game Series. Very light. Uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. Monica, you like it too, right? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, this is from the whole family of area impulse, meaning like examples would be uh, Breakout Normandy, Storm Over Arnhem. This is uh, lighter than those games. They added some cards to the gameplay. Um, but it's a basic exhaustion system, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. All right, here we are in the Red October Park with some German units. Um, your typical war game counters with uh, the, the typical NATO symbols for armor. The first value is their firepower. The second value would be their defense. And the last value would be their movement allowance. It's an exhaustion game or an area impulse game. So what happens is you activate a area. So this big, huge, zoom out a little bit, Monica. This big, huge area here is, is the area. So I, in my turn, I'd activate the area. And then I can, I have a few options. I can move or I can attack. That's really my only two options. And so if I wanted to attack, I can attack something in the same area as me. So let's say there are some Russians in here. Or I can attack an area that's an adjacent area. And uh, there's pros and cons to doing each. But let's just say this is a basic attack uh, versus these guys versus these guys. It's a German's player's turn, so his rules are a little more uh, fiddly. The Germans can only activate units of the same uh, the same unit. So all these light blue units are all of the the 24th Panzer Division. So they can they they can only work together. I couldn't activate the 29th Mech Division and these, even though they're in the same impulse. Whereas the Russians, they're all working together. So they can even if they're from different divisions, they can still still play together. The Germans can only use units of the same division. So these guys are all the 24th Panzer Division. So I can activate them. Whereas the Rus, I could not use the 29th Mech. But uh, the Russians, it doesn't matter what division they're in, they can all work together when you activate them. It's an advantage the Russians have. But the Germans can also activate at the same time independent units. So the 241st Panzer, this, this, this Panzer Battalion can activate at the same time as this division and add its firepower. So if you activate to attack, you add the firepower of all your attacking units, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you add that to 2 dice. So it would be 7 plus the results of 2 dice. And then you compare that to the defense value of the units, the highest defense value of any of the units you're attacking. So in this case, we'd have a 10 here, so that's the highest defense value. So a 10 plus the terrain, whoever controls the terrain. So the Russians control this control this terrain, see the silhouette there, so they get plus 1. So their, their defense value would be 11. The attack value would be the total of these plus 2 dice roll. And then the difference is how many casualty points you have to take. Casualty points are very simple in this game. It takes... One point to flip a guy from spent to exhausted, a second point to retreat to an adjacent friendly zone, and a third point if you kill that thing. So let's say you have to satisfy six points. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, and kill that unit, or any combination thereof. And after these Germans attack, you flip them to their spent side, like this. They're not reduced or anything like other games and things are flipped. It just means they're spent. And at the end of the turn, when every unit on the board has moved, everything flips back over to the fresh side again. So it's very simplistic in its, in its, in its combat. If you attack in a spot that's adjacent, it's a little different. You have to put this fire marker on yourself. And what that does is in subsequent uh, impulses, if someone attacks you, because you fired out of this area, the designer made it so you don't get the terrain defense anymore. So it's a disadvantage to try to fire somewhere adjacent because uh, later on someone could fire at you. Um, another interesting thing is movement points there's only this is a mech unit so it can move four but typically you can only move two spots and there's no zones of control or anything like that it's a very simple movement you can move from one spot to one friendly spot with no enemy units to an adjacent friendly spot with no enemy units for one point simple one point two points if the, it's an enemy controlled spot such as, let's say this spot down here was German controlled, it costs an additional point. So it'll be one to move there plus one more because it's German controlled. Or if it's friendly controlled, but there's a German unit in it, it's still an extra point. And vice versa. If you try to leave 
uh, a friendly controlled area that's got a German unit in it, it costs one extra point. So it cost to go to this spot to be one point plus one point to leave a spot that's got a German unit. So that prevents people from blitzing across the board and taking things because there's simply not enough uh, movement points. Also, when you when you spend when you exhaust the unit, your defense value is going to drop even just a little bit, and it's disadvantage there's a big disadvantage to attacking first because if another if if you flip that's one less casualty point you can take because remember it's one point to flip over a fresh unit so if you're already flipped that's one less point so there's a lot of strategy in deciding uh like bluffing back and forth trying to decide who's going to fire first this is a area impulse game meaning that it's an impulse game i go you go i go you go and so i'll activate a zone and you activate a zone you i activate a zone you activate a zone until both players pass once both players pass, the turn ends. Everyone flips everything back over to its fresh side. You get new cards, and you start all over again. The game's only six turns long, but each turn in consists of 20, 30 impulses. And it's just, I go, you go, I go, you go. One impulse could be a huge battle, or it could be just simply moving one little guy. All right? So uh, that's basically the game sequence and how it works. The object of the game is for the German player to capture... These, these, th these three point areas, these three defense areas are the victory point areas. And at the beginning of the game, the players are going to bid to play the Russians to see how many they can hold. A typical bid would be three. So the Russian saying that he can control at the end of the game three of these three point things. If the German can capture all of them but two, he wins. And if both players bid the same amount, eh, then it basically goes to a roll off. So that's an interesting. If you look down here at the, uh, the turn track, Zoom in a little bit there. The turn track is going to show you uh, what turn it is, and at the end of turn three, all the, the black German counters are going to leave the board, so the Russian has to keep that in mind as they're playing. Those ones are recalled to Germany. And it shows you how many cards you get, which brings up card play. Cards adds uh, a nice random element to the game. Uh, a little bit more strategy. And there's, there's only so many cards, and so you there's only like 25 cards or so per side. But on your turn, you, you're you going to get so many cards. And uh, three Soviet, six German, plus whoever controls one of the zones on the map, there's a special zone. Whoever controls that zone gets one extra card. But uh, on your turn, you can play these cards. And you can play these cards for your action, for your impulse, or some of the cards will let you add uh, certain things during your turn. So it's not your impulse, it's just an addition to your uh, your turn. Uh, there's all kinds of different things. Rubble that would add defense. There's rockets that the Russians can fire, which is a, is a whole separate attack, an eight-power power attack. There's pioneers, which will remove the terrain of different areas. There's dice that lets you, or cards that let you re-roll your dice if you have a bad die roll. Uh, there's a sniper card, which you can play to cancel an opponent's card. But So there's lots of different options. I do like the cards. It, it adds a whole other dimension to a, a very simple game. Uh, if we get into a little strategy here, uh, the Russians have to just defend, 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 and just try to hold those zones, keep the Germans from doing it. And the Germans start off really powerful, and they got to boom, 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 and try to take those zones as fast as they can. Um, I like this game. Um, Monica and I have played it a few times the past few days. Just uh, She actually suggested it one of the days. It wasn't me always pushing it. And so she likes it. It's very light. I think you could probably learn this game in a half an hour. Um, and then gameplay itself, I would give yourself three hours, maybe plus or minus an hour, depending on how well you know the game. And uh, I'm, there's a, I'm pretty sure there's a Vassal module for it. You can play it online. And it's fairly cheap. Most of the multi-man games are pretty low cost. So this is a multi-man game I highly suggest. Definitely pick it up. So, uh, you got anything to add, Gary? Okay, well, Gary likes it, too. Hi, Josiah. <laughs> Got the banjo music in the background there. <laughs> uh. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 